Electronic Communication Networks, also known as ECNs for short, is a topic for discussion in this video lesson. Like we discussed in an earlier video lesson, ECNs have revolutionized the trading world as technology has changed the way traders interact with the market. It seems like with each passing day, more and more volume passes through ECNs rather than conventional exchanges such as the NYSE. So why is this occurring? Simple. ECNs are providing traders with faster executions, better rate incentives, and most importantly, are providing traders with the ability to hide orders. Let's break down each of these competitive advantages provided through ECNs. First, the ability to hide orders. Thanks to ECNs, any trader now has the capability to place hidden orders, which is something that was only previously available to NYSE floor traders. Now, through the use of ECNs, any trader has a choice of showing a limit order as the full amount, a fraction of the actual amount, which is often referred to as an iceberg, or even place the entire order invisible to the public. For example, if the current quote is $40.60 by $40.65, and you place a hidden sell limit order at $40.63, then the current quote available to the public would stay the same, even though you have now changed the quote to $40.60 by $40.63. Thus, you essentially skip the line without tipping off other sellers who might want to skip in front of you. Therefore, if someone attempts to buy at $40.65 or higher, they essentially would receive your price of $40.63 thus filling your sell limit order. This ability to hide can be extremely useful to traders as they can place orders of any size and at any price without sending signals to other traders of any possible intentions that they may have. Now the ability to place iceberg orders can be just as useful to a trader as these allow you to show a fraction of your order without scaring price action away from your current limit order, especially if it is greater than a few hundred shares. For instance, an iceberg order of 2,000 shares set to show 100 shares would be visible to the public as 100 shares, even though the order is getting filled. The 100 shares would remain there until the entire order is completely executed. Having these choices available through ECNs has helped even the playing field between floor traders and electronic traders. Better rate incentives are offered when placing limit orders through ECNs. While it does cost more to take liquidity from ECN compared to the NYSE, ECNs in turn reimburse you more when you provide liquidity. So what does this mean to take and provide liquidity? Let's use an example to help explain. Let's say the current quote of a stock that we are looking to buy is $30.10 by $30.14. If you place a buy market order or a limit order at $30.14 or higher, you would be taking shares from someone else. Therefore, you would be paying a small fee for taking liquidity. However, if you place a limit order at $30.13 or lower and wait even for a millisecond and someone else fills your order, then you are providing liquidity and would receive a small rebate for providing that liquidity. So with this in mind, let's break down the differences between the NYSE's cost structure compared to the most frequently used ECN cost structure. The NYSE charges traders less for taking liquidity than compared to ECNs, but in turn give back less in rebates compared to ECNs when traders provide liquidity. Therefore, ideally a trader would take liquidity from the NYSE and provide liquidity through the ECNs. This would help maximize cost effectiveness. The exact rates can be found on the official NYSC website as these costs and rebates constantly change. Keep in mind, we are talking fractions of a penny per share, but for big, high-frequency traders, these costs and rebates can add up quickly. Therefore, it is becoming more and more common to see large limit orders 
that used to go through the NYSC now being placed through ECNs. And finally, speed is the third reason why ECNs have become so popular. ECN activity is lightning quick compared to the more methodical NYSE. It is common to have trades take place so quickly on ECNs that some of the transactions are not even visible to the human eye, thus making tape reading ECN activity nearly impossible. When an NYSE stock moves quickly and violently, ECNs seem to trade twice as fast as overly eager traders take positions at outlier prices. This is because ECNs essentially speculate off the NYSE quote. Keep in mind though, only on the rarest occasions do ECNs deviate far from the latest NYSE quote. However, this does occur when an NYSE stock makes a dramatic shift in price up or down in a very short period of time triggering what is known as a liquid resistance point, or LRP for short. These LRPs are set at different price levels for each NYSE stock based on the stock's average daily price action. Once a stock hits a LRP trading activity through the NYSE in that particular stock, that stock is temporarily halted for anywhere from 5 to 10, even 30 seconds. During this time, all orders attempting to be filled through the NYSC are temporarily halted in that stock. ECNs, however, remain live and active during these temporary halts, allowing traders to enter and exit positions on the stock as speculation runs wild. Okay, clearly ECNs have some big incentives that draw traders to execute orders through them. But you should be aware of the two issues that sometimes give traders headaches when using ECNs. One is that market orders sent through ECNs can occasionally lead to some terrible execution prices as ECN liquidity can evaporate in a blink of an eye, causing your market order to get filled far from the current pool price. And two, the annoying partial fills that sometimes occur when using ECNs as odd lots are permitted to trade freely through ECNs. This is something the NYSE does not allow as all trades must be a minimum of 100 shares and are preferred in round lots of hundreds. ECNs allow orders as small as one share to be executed. Therefore, traders can sometimes be left with a partial fill on an order. Now, should you find yourself with an odd lot totaling over 100 shares, let's say 142 shares for example, then you can use a market order through the NYSE or a market or limit order through the ECNs. However, if you wind up with an odd lot totaling less than 100 shares, let's say 42 shares for example, then you must do one of two things either take out of the odd lot through ECNs or add to your current odd lot position in order to total 100 shares or greater so that you can freely exit through the NYSE or ECNs. Just as a reminder, odd lot ECN orders on the level 2 have an asterisk next to the number of shares being displayed. Now, although partial fills and market orders on ECNs are setbacks, they should not deter you from trading through ECNs, as the advantages greatly outweigh the disadvantages. Moreover, as you will see through these upcoming examples, ECNs are something you should utilize when identifying logical entry and exit points. Okay, taking a look at this first slide, you can see the current quote price listed on the NYSC tape is $25.31 by $25.36 for AFLAC, ticker symbol AFL. Therefore, the NYSC is indicating a four cent spread in the stock with only 3,500 shares available at the bid. However, by quickly analyzing the level two, we see that the actual best available bid is at $25.34 for 9,600 shares on ARCA three cents better than what is available on the NYSC. 
Therefore, when determining the actual quote price of a stock, it is imperative for you to take a look at all the available exchanges and find out what the highest willing buyer is at and where the lowest willing seller is at. Moving on to the next stock, we see Tiffany & Company, ticker symbol TIF, in the midst of a 50 cent sell-off. By taking a quick glance at the tape, limit book, and ECNs on the level two, we see that the only substantial seller can be found on the ECNs at $34.53 for 8,300 shares. This large seller is essentially creating a ceiling in an attempt to keep the stock price from rising. Therefore, having identified the situation, you can make a logical decision to either use the large seller as protection for your short position by placing your stop loss directly behind it at $34.54, seeking the stock to continue its downward trend, or decide instead to long the stock should the large seller fail to hold the price causing the stock price to rise above $34.53. In this next slide, we see Blackstone Group, ticker symbol BX. As you can see from the stock chart, the stock was up significantly early in the morning and fell all the way down to roughly yesterday's closing price where it is currently consolidating between the moving average on the downside acting as support and a price level of $10.20 acting as resistance. By looking at the tape, limit book, and ECNs, we can identify that the culprit for the consolidation at $10.20 is a large limit order of 4,400 shares on ARCA acting as crowd. Now, as we discussed in the previous video lesson, crowd orders are often larger than they appear and are known to constantly refresh or reload. Therefore, we can determine if the stock manages to penetrate through either the resistance caused by the crowd seller at $10.20 or the support caused by the moving average, a high probability, high reward, low risk trade can develop. By taking a look at the next slide, we fast forward two minutes ahead in stock activity and see that like we had anticipated, once the stock price broke above the resistance, caused by the seller found on the ECN, the stock price rose quickly. With this next stock, ticker symbol HUM for Humana, we can see a stock creeping towards its moving average for the first time on the trading day, as it is up $1.65. Now, as we know from a previous video lesson on moving averages, a highly profitable, high reward, low risk trade is potentially forming as the stock can either bounce dramatically off its moving average and go to new highs on the trading day, or break the moving average and reverse its trend. By looking at the information available on the tape, limit book, and ECNs, we see that a significant size seller has parked himself on the NASD for 14,700 shares, creating a temporary ceiling. This obviously causes the stock to bottleneck as the price bounces in a tight range between the moving average and the large sell limit order on NASD. Taking a look at the stock just a few hours later, we see that the moving average successfully held as support as buyers broke through the large ECN seller on NASD, which signaled strength causing the stock to move another $1.40 higher, causing it to be up over $3 on the trading day. So to recap, ECNs have become a fixture in trading over the last decade as technology has improved the means in which traders buy, sell, and short positions. Due to some of the competitive advantages ECNs possess over exchanges such as the NYSE, trading volume through ECNs has grown substantially Therefore, with this increase in volume, it is common to see large orders parked on ECNs at key levels, thus creating great trading setups when found.